All right, guys, welcome back to another one. Uh, we're doing 20 gauge today. Two and three quarter inch. Now, uh, I do load two and a half inch and three inch and 20 gauge too, but today we're just focusing on two and three quarter inch. But before we get to loading some of these, uh, something I wanna talk about here. Uh, these are two and three quarter inch, all two and three quarter inch 20 gauge shawls, right? Well, check this out. This is supposed to be a two and a half inch paper haul. It's a Shaddai from Ballistic Products. They're listed under the two and a half inch hauls. The bag says two and five eighth inch. The bag also says 67 millimeter. Two and a half inch is supposed to be 65 millimeter. This is a factory two and three quarter inch estate haul, okay? What do you notice there? If you can see it right. That two and a half inch haul is actually taller by a sixteenth of an inch than this two and three quarter inch state hall. What size is that? There is a two and three quarter inch federal hall. It's the same height as the two and two and a half inch paper hall. Here's a two and three quarter inch Remington hall. I'm sorry, this is the uh no this is the Remington. It is also a little bit shorter than the two and a half inch paper hall. That makes sense to you? It don't to me. But anyway, uh, yeah, we're doing a 20 gauge, two and three quarter, two and three quarter inch buckshot video. Uh, me and Josh have actually filmed two or three 20 gauge videos and uh, had to scrap them because the 20 gauge just keeps giving us trouble. Um, sometimes it's the gun, that pump that we had, it's the uh, the noble that gun sometimes gives up gives us trouble other times it's totally me and I forget to bring the ammo with me uh, I ended up bringing a few rounds and they're not the rounds I wanted to bring so start filming get a few shots out oops I forgot the loads Just have to scrap it again so hopefully this time it works out and I won't forget stuff at home the guns won't give us trouble uh, his dad has a Maverick 88 20 gauge. Uh, we plan on using that next time. I also have a single shot with a full choke, so may end up using it too. Who knows? But, uh, what do you say we get to loading some of these up? We're going back. These three are once fired. This is a brand new haul. We're going back with Shadot Primers and the three once fireds, and, uh, this one, the Shadot haul has a Shadot Primer. Why? I don't know. Doesn't make sense to me why Shadot Hall would have a Shadot Primer. Anyway, let's get to loading one up. Uh, let's do the... Let's do the Federal Hall first. Again, two or three quarter inch. This first one is using 17 grains of long shot. Looks like that'd be it. 20. Overshot it just a little bit. 19. There we go. 17 grains. The wad we're using is the, this is conventionally loaded. Uh, I'm using 29 and 31 cal buck. Neither one of them are small enough to fit in a 20 gauge shot cup. Now, the 29 cal will but it's tight and it will dimple the haul out unless you're using something really thin wall like the Fiocchi's. These Federals and the Estate, they're about the same haul. And this Remington, the plastic is too thick, but I have gotten it to work in the Fiocchi's. I've also gotten 33 caliber double lot buck to stack by twos in the Fiocchi hauls, but again, it dimples the haul out a little bit. Um, I already have one of these done up the way I load these right here. Um, if you looked in here, maybe you can see it, maybe you can't. I'm going to try to show you, uh, maybe if I tap the screen here, yeah, you can see a little nub in the bottom of the wad. These are three quarter ounce wads. If you get rid of that little nub on the inside, it's a seven eighth ounce wad. That's the only difference between the clay buster three quarter and seven eighth ounce wads is the little nub in the center of it. The 16 gauge pink wads, they're labeled, uh, one ounce wad, no, they're labeled seven eighth ounce wads, but 
they hold one ounce flush with the shot cup. If you get rid of the little nub in there, it's a one and one eighth ounce wad. So what I'm doing here is cutting the petals off. Now the rest of these, if I use these wads, again, uh, besides these two right here, I'll just do it off camera because it is time consuming, but I'm just showing you how I load this. Just trim the petals off the best you can. Something like that. It doesn't have to be perfect just yet. We'll uh, get to that in just a second. Then just take your knife and work around that little nub. Maybe you can actually see it better now. Yep, there you go. Just hack it off too. You want this flat. This plastic is actually really tough too. This blade is sharp and uh, it's still hard to cut through. About three quarter of the way through it now. There it goes. A little bit more on this side to cut off. All right, that's relatively flat. Now we have to finish trimming off the uh, petals because that little nub thing prevented you from uh, cutting the shot pedals all the way off. Actually, there was just a little bit more of that left. But, if you guys load up any of these, buy the 7 8 ounce clay buster wads or the... Uh, the uh, Field Commander 20 gauge wads, that's gonna work a lot better than this, even though you can make this work. Those wads you do not have to modify. Especially the uh, the Field Commander wad, where there are four straight wall holes. These, hole, these wads are for tapered holes. So, take your pliers, pinch out the gas seal a little bit. Got it. Now, uh, this is the 12-gauge wad guide that's on the press right now. You don't have to switch it out. It still works for 16 and 20 and 10. Give that some pressure. Make sure it's seated. Works just fine. You don't have to change that out from your 12-gauge. I never change out my wad guide. The only thing I do with this is uh, the back of it. You can set it for two and three quarter, three inch. If you drill a hole towards the bottom of it, you can do three and a half inch, 10 and 12 gauge on it. On it, Voice cracked, going through puberty. Almost 30 years old, going through puberty. Anyway, this is a one ounce load. You're gonna need 10 pellets of 29 cal, number one buck. Ballistic Products calls it two and a half, I believe, but uh, Wade Rush calls it number one, and I've always known it also as number one. There's eight, ten. Oops. One rolled in the floor. But there's ten pellets. Basically right where it needs to be. The buffer. Whatever you want. Whatever buffer you want. I'll let you guys pick what I'm using today. Okay, we'll go with the ITX. Looks like it's going to need about one and a half scoops. Let's go do it right there. May need an overshot card. I'm going to throw one in, any, in anyway. One section off a 32 gauge nitro card is what I'm using. This is a eight point crimp. Okay. Back station on the Lee Load All 20 gauge press. Have the valley between the crimp uh, points facing you. The 12 gauge is opposite. Awesome looking crimp. These federal and estate 20 gauge hulls load up awesome. You can actually see the pellets in there. 
Let me mark this hole real quick. What I use to mark these is a fine point Sharpie. This one's just blue. I always use uh, red, green, and black. It doesn't matter. Uh, let me find blank side of the hole with no letters on it. You can take quad, uh, quad, uh, quadruple out steel wool and erase the writing that's on the hole from the factory, but I think I have a big enough space here to uh, not need to do that. This was, again, 17 grains of long shot. The clay buster wad, no petals, 10 pellets of 29 cal, and that was the ITX buffer. I have worse handwriting than a chicken hopped up on uh, about 30 pounds of caffeine. But that's okay. Me and Josh can read my handwriting. That's all that matters. Set that one aside. And we'll get to the next one. Again, I already have one of these right here that I don't have to cut. Next hole is going to be the uh, estate. I believe this one is truly 67 millimeters. We need, I believe it was 24 grains of HS6. Yeah, 1220 FPS, 24 grains. I'm, I'm going to load 22 grains and hope for 1185 FPS because I like my buckshot loads to be at 1200 or under. That seems to give me the best patterns. Shooting for 22 here. There we go. Also, another reason I'm loading 20, that's 23. 22 grains is because um, I'm using 31 cal single lot in this load. Those pellets are just a little bit heavier. The total payload with the number one buck is 1.02 ounces with the buffer and all. With the single lot buck, the lead payload weight alone is 1.06. By the time you get the buffer, it's probably just a hair under one and one eighth ounces. So that's why I'm using 22 grains. Again, clay buster wood. Already have the uh, gas still pinched out. Could use a little bit more. That's better. Another proof that this hull is not two and three quarter inch. It is very loose in here. Whereas a true two and three quarter inch hull, it fits like it should. That's okay. You can just hold up on the hull. Send it home. 10 pellets of 31 cal. 31 cal is the biggest size you can get in a 20 gauge. And it has to be conventionally loaded. There's four, six, eight, and 10. Guys, this hull, I thought that the base wad was probably really low in it. That way it didn't have to be a full two and three quarter inches, but as you guys can see, the pellets are too tall to be crimped. It's even too tall almost to be roll crimped. Again, further proof, this is not a two and three quarter inch hole. So what we're gonna do is dump the pellets back out, pull the shot cut back out, and I'm gonna load this one here with fiber wad and a gas seal. I use a screwdriver. Poke the center of the wad by hand, pull it right out. I already have this set up right here. It's the, let me show you. Obturator, no, this is the obturator. This is the low profile gas seal for 20 gauge from Ballistic Products. That's what that is right there. And that's what I'm using. Probably don't need that. Now, these gas seals do fit very, very tightly in the holes. In fact, it's so tight, I almost can't push it down by hand. Using three quarter inch, not three quarter inch, uh, what is this? It's about seven eighth inch, not seven eighth inch. It's uh, not quite half inch, um, just a little bit less than a half inch. That was a mess to get out. Stumbled over my words. One, two, three. 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. This one is right where it needs to be. Again, that was just under half inch fiber cushion wood. Going with the ITX buffer again. Another one and a half scoops got it. This one will not need an overshot card. Eight point crimp again. Very nice pre crimp. It's gonna look nice. Very nice actually. Awesome crimp. Uh, the 20 gauge Lilo at all does better crimps than the 12 and 16 gauge. Just throwing that out there. It really does. Mark that one there. I am marking these on camera today because uh, we're firing these. I'm not reloading them just to show you how I loaded them. These loads are the ones we will be firing in the video. Again, this was 22 grains of HS6, low profile gas seal, uh, FCW means the fiber cushion wood, 10 pellets of single lot. Just writing zero buck on it because that's what my single lot is. Is uh, well zero buck obviously. It's thirty one caliber. Uh, I don't have thirty two caliber single lot. Some people call that double lot. Some people call it single lot. It's whatever you want to call it. And this is again the ITX buffer. Looks good. You guys probably can't read a word of that. Next load, we're going to load this uh, Remington hole here. We're using 22 grains of IMR Blue. Now we're using the piece of the Clay Buster wad. See, this hole doesn't move up and down. It's true 2 and 3 quarter inch. Very tight to get in there, too. Probably should have opened that case mouth up on the hole, but learn my lesson. What's going on here? Okay, I've got it. That was strange. I got it in there. Okay, this one is again. 10 pellets of 29 cal. 31 cal is actually a little bit too big for this Remington hall where the plastic is so thick. It doesn't exactly want to go in there by twos easily. But it'll work if you want to if you if you want to make it work. There's four, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Ten pellets. ITX buffer once again. This one may not need the full. Yeah, it will. These Remington halls load up really nice too. This one is a uh, one, two, three. This one's a six-point crimp front station. Got to pinch it in a little bit. There we go. Awesome looking crimp. Remington halls load up really nice too. 
Let's mark this one. Actually, I can remember that load. I'll I just start IMR blue on it, and I'll do the rest later just to save some time. IMR blue, 22 grains. Ah, I'll just go ahead and finish it, I guess. CB wad, no pedal. 10 pellets of 29 cal. ITX buffer. Now on to the paper haul. Um, I've had a few of you guys message me on Facebook, and a few of you have left YouTube comments saying that you guys also have these holes, and uh, they split. Um, I've been told several times by a few people these holes actually split when you fire them. They don't always split, but sometimes they do. Uh, if I had known that prior to buying these, I probably wouldn't have bought them, but I do really like paper holes. That is why I bought them specifically because they're paper holes. So, let's load up a, uh, what else do I wanna do here? Let's do a long shot load with the uh, 31 cal. Using 15 grains of a long shot in this one. 17. Still 17. Still says 17. Still says 17. 15. There we go. Let me double check that again. Yeah. 15 grains of long shot. Can't load the pellets yet. Uh, okay, here it is. These uh, low-profile gas seals have holes in them. Don't know why, but they do. That gas seal is very tight. Go ahead and use the press to get it down all the way. There we go. Look how much room, if you guys can see it. Uh, you can't see it, but there is tons of room left in that hole. Gonna need fiber cushion wood. Let me just grab one out of here. Show you guys how to, uh, these are 10 gauge. Wanna fight for 20. Just hack off about a quarter of the gas seal. Left with something like that. Hack off about a quarter the other way. And a little bit off the center. And that lets you can squeeze this down a little bit with your fingers and then it goes right in the hole. Just like that. Add a little bit of compression. Where did my primer door go? It's missing. No idea. Trying to show you guys, but I don't have enough light. That's okay. 10 pellets. I may not have enough fiber wad in there. These paper holes have tons of capacity. 10 pellets of 31 cal. Again, lead payload weight is 1.06 with my buckshot anyway. It may be different with yours because of the alloy. See, this is, uh, those ain't falling out of there. 31 cal just fits in there, uh, no play at all. Six. Get back here. Eight, ten. Yep, I'm gonna need. I'll just run it over shot card. I don't feel like taking that back out. Um, ITX buffer. There's one scoop. 
That's two full scoops. That one, instead of one and a half scoops, took two full scoops to cover the pellets. Top section of the 32 gauge nitro card. Just need one section is what it looks like it'll need. And we're going with a six point fold. Looks just like that. You can load these paper hauls just like you would plastic. Very nice crimp. Paper hauls load up nice. Trying to show you guys. There you go. Got a nice deep set crimp, crimp on that. It's even tapered a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see it, but yeah, it's even tapered just a little bit. I cannot ask for better than that. That is awesome. Let's mark it. Really don't want to write on these paper holes because it ain't going to come back off, but that's okay. Uh, I had an idea when I first got these um, to actually tape off the brass and spray paint these a different color like uh, something like seafoam green or black because yellow is not one of my favorite colors and uh, I think it's kind of ugly. That's part of the reason why I don't really like 20 gauge all that much is because the holes are yellow. Let's see, this was 15 grains of long shot. Uh, the low profile gas seal. Half inch fiber cushion wood. 10 pellets of 31 cal single lot and a uh, ITX buffer. There we go. Again, my handwriting is absolute garbage, but me and Josh can read it, and that's all that matters. <sighs> That's really all of the powders that I have that can do a one ounce load in two and three quarter inch 20 gauge. Um, the WSF can do it, but it is a bit high pressure. Um, Hodgden doesn't list on their web website any one ounce loads for 20 gauge, but uh, my friend Zach has a manual that has several one ounce loads using w WSF on it. But... It's a bit too high pressure for my liking. It's just a hair under 11,000 PSI, and that's already pushing the limits for the two and three quarter inch 20 gauge, and three inch, I guess. But um, if you guys want to load, I won't drag it out, but if you don't have IMR blue and you have blue dot, use the same 22 grain powder charge. Uh, that'll get you probably 11, 1185 FPS, not quite 1200 because uh, from what I've seen everybody testing the IMR Blue and Blue Dot back-to-back, -back, the IMR Blue using the exact same powder charge will have slightly higher FPS. And uh, a one-ounce load using 22 grains of IMR Blue is 1,200 FPS. The Blue Dot's prob probably running around 1165, 1185 in that ballpark. But I uh, guess that's going to end this one here. If you guys got any suggestions for me, of what you want to see, leave them in the comments. If you got any questions, leave those in comments. I'll get back to you. Uh, help me get to a thousand subscribers. Me and Josh have a deal to make with you guys. If you can get us to a thousand subscribers, we'll uh, dual wield my 10 gauges, the Browning and the 36 inch barrel H&R with three ounce loads. And uh, we plan on firing them at the same time. Now, uh, that's gonna be quite a bit of recoil you might see one of us fall. Hopefully we don't, but it'd be funny if we did. I know you guys are probably wanting to see that. So help us get to a thousand subscribers and we'll get that done for you. <laughs> that should be awesome. Kind of looking forward to doing that myself. But uh, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next one.